You'll be turning this small piece of plywood here into a desk. This is going to be used as a writing, drawing, work desk, as well as be able to be put in various different angles and positions to be used for drawing or like an easel or something like that. I figure I'll just design this table on the fly and try and make it work as I go along. So I've made these two sort of support members here that go off the back. That will be basically this table is upside down. That'll be the wall side and there will be dowels basically that form pivots. So this dowel will go in like that and hook onto various slots on the wall side. Then up here there'll be another dowel that has a pivot in it basically Whoop. to another member that will go out like this and slot into various different spots on the wall. I'm going to drill a one inch hole into this board here. This is so that the dowels can go through this board and form a pivot. Now to, to make sure that I do a clean cut, I've drilled a pilot hole going through and I'll go halfway down with the one inch, flip it over and then come up from the other side so that I don't blow out the, the bottom edge when I'm drilling. Okay, so I've drilled down halfway and like I said, I'm just going to flip it over and start from this side. And this is the result with that hole drilled and the dowel pushed through. So I just need to make a matching hole on this beam's twin. Okay, you can see that that's fitting through both of those ones right there. So now I just need to do two more holes right at the ends of these boards. Okay, so both of these beams have two holes cut in them now. These ones here are basically completed. This is going to be the side that hooks into the wall. And then this is a joint. So I need to make two more members that will sort of uh, act as a swivel on those two rods there. So I had to trim these down because before I cut the holes, I didn't make sure that both of these were the same length, so the holes weren't lined up properly. So this is going to have to sit back a little bit like that. Um, and I've kind of lost, I had that little bit of extra space there, but that's not a big deal. So I'm just drilling the holes for these support beams, and I realized that I made a mistake. I, I worked out what I needed to get a 45 degree angle basically for these support beams and that was 27 and a half inches and I cut the boards to 27 and a half inches but that measurement should have been from the center of these holes so now this is slightly too short but I'm just going to go ahead and stick with it but it just won't that just means that I'll have a little bit of a harder time calculating uh, where when I put the hooks for these to slot into. That might not make a lot of sense right now, um, but hopefully it will by the end of the video. So this is the basic idea here, but I've discovered that I've made another mistake. So basically, these will, will pivot out like this, right? And then if you imagine we're looking at this upside down, this is the back, and that'll slot into a, a, a slot on the wall there. Problem is, these are supposed to be underneath the table. So because this this is screwed straight to the table, I can't actually move this one um, just because of the way that it's designed. So these ones here need to be moved up a little bit to give this one here room to pivot. So I'm going to cut another one that's the same length as this, but just a little bit of a spacer. Another change that I made was that I took a sander and I took off the corners here to make a nice smooth curve and hopefully this will help with that pivoting motion. Okay, so I've got this working here, and I've just put a shim underneath of this part here, and it goes to the end of the desk, not the end of the board, because that's where it kind of needs to be. After the end of the board, right, then that's going to have to stick out on its own, and I don't want the shim interfering. So I've used wood glue and some finishing nails to secure these wood struts down to the desktop. And I've just run this bar through here to sort of show what that will look like. Okay, so here's the first full look at how this is going to work. I put all three dowels in so that we have an idea of what this will actually work like. This one here will be trimmed down to just basically to this point here. But those two are going to stick out because they need to fit into slots that will go on a channel running uh, like parallel to this. So the angle of the desk is done by doing this basically <laughs> with this support here. So I've trimmed down this dowel here, put some wood glue around it, and then I'm going to insert this one on top. Basically I want it to be fully secured to this beam here. Uh, that way when it pivots this one, this joint here is moving but this one isn't. And that will also stop these arms on the outside from coming off. 
Okay, so this joint is now secure. I put in a nail here and on the front here and then on the other side. So now when this moves like this, it's going to stay in place. So I've brought the desk into the van and it's going to go between the bed and the fireplace here on this wall. So I've cut out two uh, 1x4s here that are that high. And basically these are going to be the side supports that the desk will slot into. I've cut three pieces of bracing to go between the two vertical support beams and this will make it into something that can actually be attached to the wall. So I've just added pocket holes to the ends of these bracings so that I'll be able to screw them in properly. Okay, so I've made this frame and I still have one more piece to go in the middle but I'm going to save putting that in place for a little bit because I want it to line up and look good when I actually have the desk in place. In order to do some test fitting with the desk, I need to trim down these dowels here to fit between the two boards. Well, sh <laughs> uh, the desk is too wide to fit into the frame here. And the frame is based on where it's actually going to be fitting in the van, so I need to trim down the desk somehow. Um, this is going to be a problem. So I've disconnected this entire mechanism here, and... I'm going to trim down this joint. Basically, I'm going to move these two ports inward and then have it so that these two uh, things here can slot in on the inside. And then this will sort of sit over top, hopefully, of that frame there. So I'm just going to get the measurements right, recut everything down, and do a test fitting. Okay, so here's a test fitting. And what it's telling me is that I need to trim down the desk itself. So I will try and show you how this works, basically, like this. So that might be like an easel mode or something like that, right? But when it's put flat up, and you can see the problem here with uh, this one sticking out, is that up here, right, I wouldn't be able to get that to sit in. So the desk has to fit between these two spaces, so I'll just cut it to the length of one of these dowels. So I've been doing some more thinking, and I've come to the conclusion that the tabletop needs to be made last. So I'm going to make the whole mechanism, and then I'll attach the tabletop. So I've taken off one of the struts here because I've just been doing some mathematics, and whoever said you don't need trigonometry in school is wrong. And it looks like 6.5 inches apart is the perfect spacing for those uh, hooks, if you will. So I've cut down some of these boards. These are now two and a half inches thick. And what I will do is I'll drill a bunch of holes into these and then cut those into hooks. And then these will get screwed in place, basically one on each of those vertical members over there. Okay, so I've drilled all the holes into one of these. There's eight different slots that those dowels can go into like that. So I've gone ahead and marked out some notches here. These are at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to cut them out with a jigsaw, and that way I'm actually able to insert uh, the dowels from the side. So I've cut a notch into all eight holes here, so now the dowels will be able to slide in like that. So I just brought that notch board over here to do a test fitting, and I was kind of taking it on faith that the bottom and the top ones here would be enough to have this mechanism go completely flat. And it is. Now, I don't know if that's a mathematical certainty or anything like that, because I just based this these measurements on that 90-degree countertop, but it does work out perfectly. So here's an example of that desk put at a 90-degree angle. <laughs> this test fitting is actually working out really well, so I just need to make the other one of those notched boards, and I'll probably be able to assemble it. So before I can put on those hooks, I decided to add the third bracer, and I just put it in the middle there. I was having some other plans for it, but I think this is going to be best. Okay, so this portion here is now fully completed. Those hooks are screwed and glued into the sides, and it's fully braced. These uh, will be mounted against the wall. So it's getting dark, but I've still managed to cut down the desktop here so that it fits between the two boards with the hooks on them. This means that it should work perfectly with the mechanism. Okay, so here's the new and improved bracing. Uh, it's quite a bit thicker um, on these sides here. It just adds a little bit more structural support, and it's a little bit taller as well. I decided that this time around I would screw these supports into the tabletop. That way I can change out the tabletop if I find it's not very nice, and I might want to replace it one day. 
And also the other difference here is that this is a lot, like this part here doesn't stick out the back this time because of the changes that I made to the size of the table, it can now fit completely in here. So I've just trimmed down this hinge dowel right here. It's now perfectly uh, level with the edges of here. And then obviously I've put in place these two support beams. So what I'm gonna try now is just a dry fitting with the dowels put in place, but not nailed together. Okay, so I did my test fitting and these are now perfectly lined up and pinned in place with little finishing nails. So now this is fully completed and ready to be mounted. It's time to cover up this wheel well, and I've just cut some spacing pieces here from some scrap plywood. So I've screwed in three of these boards into the wheel wells here. And then these two ones between the boards are just, they're not there to support so much as to stop flex in the boards. So they're just gonna be glued to the boards which go on top. So for now, they're just loose like that. So this is the basic idea. There will be a board running along the top here like this, and then a matching board that comes up to meet it like this. And then the front will be vertical little boards as well. So that first board there is screwed in place, and so is the little one down the side. So I've got three boards in place, and you might be able to tell here that this one is gonna be a little bit custom. It's slightly shorter, and I'm gonna to have to have boards going along the front as well. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm gonna leave it for now, because I want to get the desk in here tonight. There was a bit of a freak snowstorm yesterday, and I'm just trying to get all my projects into the van as quickly as I can. So I'm gonna put in the desk, and then I'll go back and handle the front of this wheel well. So I've just brought this portion of the desk here into the van, and I've noticed that I made a slight error when I calculated where this uh, switch here is supposed to be, so I'm gonna have to move it over slightly. So here I've moved this over slightly. It took a while, I had to do a lot of rewiring and I broke some wires, but in the end it worked. So I've got this coming up the top now because that's kind of the only way I could do it. And then on top of here, there will be a shelf with the lighting underneath of it. Somehow I'm only just noticing that this isn't actually 90 degrees. It is actually a really comfortable angle, but I did want it to be able to be 90 degrees. But for now, I'm gonna leave it I can always fix this problem later. It's a pretty easy fix. Basically, I make a longer support beam running along there, and that will bump it up to 90, rather than trying to redo all of these notches. So here's the desk in the folded up position, aka the traveling around and you don't want it going places position. I think this actually looks pretty good. This looks like something out of Ikea, maybe. I want to add a small bookshelf above this desk. So I've cut a board to go up here, but obviously right now, any book that's up there, as soon as you move the van, it's just gonna come right off. So I need to find um, some way of securing that in with a lip of some sort. So I've cut this board here, and this is gonna be the lip that goes up here. I think that looks pretty cool, but it sticks out further, so I need to make some sides so that it will basically be fully contained. So I've cut two pieces out here to be the end caps. And I just wanna note that on all of these ones that have a curve, I've beveled the edges with a belt sander to give it a nice smooth look. So I've just used pocket holes to make this into one piece. And then it will get mounted up like that. Okay, so it is nailed in place. It is looking really good. I'm super happy with this. And then I've put a little L bracket right here on the inside to keep the shelf up and it's right in the center there. So I've added an L bracket in the middle here going against the wall. Books are really heavy so it's always a good thing to have more support than not. I finally get to use this roll of LED lights. You can cut this at certain lengths and have a strip of lighting. So I'm going to put that underneath of this shelf so that it shines down and provides light when you're using this surface here. I've hooked up the LED strip here to this switch. If I flick it on, you can see that these lights all come on going up to the roll up there. The lighting is done. That looks super cool. I especially like that you don't see the bulb, that it's hidden uh, behind this piece of trim here. If I flick this switch, 
obviously, you know, the lights go on and off kind of thing, which is great. Uh, you can see some wiring, unfortunately. I'll have to find some way of covering that up. Um, but you really can't see the light bulbs. They're all hidden up here. Goes almost to the end there. You're kind of limited. You have to cut on certain lines with these strips. But I got most of it there. Can't say that I'm very happy with the adhesive that sticks that stuff up there. I did need to use some uh, mounting tape, Gorilla Tape here on some places because it, it, you peeled off the sticky backing and there just was no, there was no adhesive. So I'm just working on a template here making power outlets. I'm going to have one that's USB and one that's a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter basically, just as you would normally find in a car. Uh, this, this nice thing about this one here is that it has a 1 amp and a 2.1 amp 5 volt USB outlet. And then in the middle here, when it's hooked up to power, there will be a display which tells you the voltage for the battery. Which means that even if I'm not looking at my, uh, basically my battery monitor, I can know whether or not I have enough battery power to plug in my device. Very helpful. But, of course, this uses power. So it'll be constantly displaying something, which I don't necessarily always want to have that light on. And when I'm not using it, I don't want power going through this. I want zero drain going through here. So I've just got a little switch here that I'm going to install next to it. And when it's flicked off, neither of these will work when plugged in, when power is plugged into them. So I can, even if there's something plugged in here, I can flick that switch and know that the power has been turned off completely. Well, here it is, basically with all the wiring finished. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be using a piece of cardboard for this. I'm going to be using a piece of metal, but I just wanted to use this as a template while I'm working on it. I finished all three power outlets. Two of them have USB and 12-volt cigarette lighter outlets, and these are for the desk area and the kitchen. And then one simply has a USB connector, and this goes by the bed. I'm only planning on installing one to go by the desk today. The other two will go in as the trim in their respective areas are completed. So this is where I want to put this outlet. This is really deep and I'm not sure that I have enough space with the wires at the back to do it in this wall. Plus this is just a really good spot with the desk in place. Okay so I've got all the mess of wires coming out of this hole here. That little one that used to be there will have to be plugged at some point but you can see that it's working. You can tell that this power is on because the USB is reading a 12.5 volt reading. If I flick this switch, now there's no power going to either socket. Flick it back on and it takes a little bit, but it will figure it out 12.4, 12.5. This seems to be a little bit less accurate than my other monitor maybe, because this is reading 12.5. This one over here is reading 12.6. I've got the outlet fully screwed in place here, and I've just hooked up my iPhone here to the USB charger. Now if I flick this switch, you're going to see on the phone that it charges. Perfect, like that. So I'm now receiving a charge. I have the option of 1 amp or 2.1 amp, and I believe iPhones charge on 1 amp regardless of what you put them in. Um, it's in the 2.1 right now, I think, but it shouldn't ma really matter that much. I've done some thinking about the angle that this is on. I actually really, really like it. I'm going to keep it this way. If I don't end up liking it, instead of changing the length of these struts here, I'll just basically move down this hole a little bit, and that will make it 90 degrees. But it's really comfortable. It's at a nice angle, and I've previously I, I've noticed a tendency of mine that I don't actually like 90 degrees as much, uh, especially when I'm using the laptop. I think that a little bit of a curve is nice, and I'm almost always using the laptop for school and that kind of thing. So this is going to stay the way it is for now. I'm going to give it a try like this. I think I will actually really like it, and if I don't, I can always change it. So I fenced in the wheel well completely with other pallet boards going vertically here. And these are all screwed in just with one screw here into the wheel well. So now I can cut a piece to go along the top portion here and finish off the wheel well. So the final board is on here. It's got a bit of an overhang just uh, because I thought it would look really strange if I trimmed it down. And I kind of like the overhang anyway. 
This board got a little bit wet, so I'm going to have to wait to polyurethane this thing, but that's all right. And as you can see, I got myself one of these little uh, DC vacuums. It's going up here to the outlet, and this thing's great. It helped me clean up all the sawdust that was here because it was causing a real mess. I'm so very happy with the way that this turned out. This design is something that I think is really functional and is going to serve me really well um, for the duration of my time in this build. I really like that it folds up flat and that gives this whole space a nice open feel. Uh, if I'd done something static, it would really eat up the space, uh, whereas this I think is really nice and open. I really like that it can be so many different things that I can use it for writing and also as an easel for drawing and there's so many different uh, possibilities with this modular design. I also like that my library is so close to hand above here um, especially for when I'm doing my writing. Uh, I write poetry um, it's something that absolutely is very interesting to me so obviously I collect um, chat books and books on poetry and those are quite small so a lot of those end up fitting here very very simply up here so if I'm writing and I want to make an allusion to something I have my references up here books on writing books on spirituality all those sort of smaller books are going to stay up there um, the books for school larger books textbook size are not going to fit on this shelf so I'm going to have to find another place to put those those are absolutely necessary because I'm a student I think a good rule for this bookshelf here is going to be uh, that all of my smaller books are going to have to fit on this rack. If they don't, then I need to get rid of another book. Um, I have a few <laughs> spaces for like maybe one or two new books on this shelf, and then I'm going to have to start um, making tough decisions, which I'm not very good at when it comes to books. But it's a good idea to limit how much uh, books I keep in here just for space reasons. And also, you know, they weigh a lot. <laughs> um, not that I'm overly concerned with weight in this vehicle, but it's still an important aspect to consider. This is one of the most exciting builds that I've done in this van. I'm so happy with it, and I hope that you guys are as well. So I'm interested to see what you guys think about this. Uh, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now. Bye, folks. The wheels on the bus go round and Let's interrupt Calm's video. The wheels on the bus go round and round and make a lot of noise.